Hey guys, this is Silde and welcome back to part 2 of my classic WoW leveling guide. In this part we will go over levels 20 to 40. Starting from where we left off in the Southern Barrens, still making sure we have caught up with both mining at skill level 65 and herbalism at skill level 100 before we move on. From levels 20 till 24 we yet again have two options. Option number one is that you stay in the Southern Barrens and finish up your quests while grinding on hyenas, thunder lizards and humanoid mobs until you reach level 24. Or you can potentially try to find a group for the Wailing Caverns if you've run out of quests to do. Option number two, which is also what I recommend to do, especially if you are either a rogue or alliance player, is to make your way to Durnhall Keep in Hillsbad Foothills and grind on the humanoid mobs inside the castle. By the way, don't worry about the trip here. We'll have to get here anyway later on in the guide. But stick with option number one if you want to completely avoid any kind of PvP. To do this as a horde player start by taking the zeppelin outside Orgrimmar or pay a mage to make you a portal to Undercity. Make sure you get both the flight path in Undercity and visit the weapons master. Make your way to Terran Mill or South Shore if you are lines. Get the flight path and set your hearthstone. and then make your way to Durnhall Keep. We grind these mobs because they have low armor, low health, a fast respawn rate and a very decent drop rate on wool cloth, which sells for a lot on the auction house. If you want to minimize risk of dying, grind the perimeter on the inside of the castle. Make sure you get the bruise wheat that spawns at this spot right here and if you're a rogue, make sure you also skill up your lock picking on the lock boxes as well. And also there's a hidden vendor right here where you can sell your grey items. Hearthstone whenever your bags are full and remember to send everything of value to your bank out so you can sell it on the auction house. Once you reach level 24 it's time to move on. If you're a hunter remember to learn Bite rank 4 from one of the giant moss creepers before you move on. From levels 24 till 30, we yet again have two options for what we can do. Option number one, we stay in Hillsbrad Foothills and grind on the beasts around Durnhall Keep, mainly focus on the spiders since they drop large venom sack which sells for a lot on the auction house. Then move on to the elder moss creepers as soon as you can kill them at a reasonable pace. Do this until you reach level 30. Option number two, we make our way to wetlands through a roughy highlands. Make sure you stick to the road as this is a high level zone. Also make sure you pick up the flight path and as a horde set your hearthstone at hammerfall. As we arrive in wetlands make your way to this area and start grinding on the whelplings here. Keep in mind that the level range from these mobs go from 24 to 27. If you're having trouble with the higher level mobs, stick to the low level ones in the beginning. Quick note, some of the whelps called lost whelps in this area are immune to shadow damage, so take care warlocks and shadow priests. The reason why we grind these mobs is because they drop small flame sacks, which can sell from anywhere between 1 to 3 gold on the auction house and also have a very small chance of dropping a pet which can go for up to 50 gold on the auction house. The small flame sacks are especially lucrative in the early phases of the game since they are used to make fire protection potions which is needed in Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. Later on they decline a little in value but still retain some value since they are used to make Dragon Breath Chili for melee DPSers in AQ and Nax. If you are behind on mining or just lower than 125 in mining, make sure you go to this cave right here before we are done in this area. This is because this cave spawns tin along with incinderite nodes which are normally used in a quest, but they can be mined from skill of 65 all the way up to 125. 
This cave will always contain at least two mining nodes at all times. It is intended so and is not a bug. This is therefore an easy way to power level your mining skill. We will also focus a lot on herbs in this zone. I will put a chart on the screen to show which herbs can be found in this zone and what skill level they require. You must get to skill level 170 in herbalism before you move on. Make sure you get any and all life root and grave moss that you find. Life root can be found near water and grave moss can be found right here at the cemetery. So make sure you stop by here every half an hour or so and pick up all the grave moss which sells for a lot on the auction house. Life root is a bit of a gamble as I'm not sure it will increase in value. But it should increase in value when AQ comes around since it's used to make nature protection potions. Once you've reached level 30, it's time to move on. But before we do that, let's just see how well we've done in terms of income up until now. So from levels 1 till 25, as you can see here, I've already made 104 gold. And this was purely done by following my own guide, sending valuable items to my bank out, and then selling them on the auction house. And as you can see, I still got some items here stuck in the auction house, but uh, I didn't want to wait for them to sell in order to show you guys this. I'm not going to be continuing leveling this guy, as I want to put out this video series in a timely manner. So from now on, I'll be showing you the rest of the way to level 60 on my main characters. From levels 30 to 33, make your way to 1000 needles, get the flight path and set your hearthstone. If you want to, I suggest you pick up all the quests in this zone and start completing them. Once you're done, make your way to this cave and start grinding on the harpies. Be careful, these mobs have a very fast respawn rate and some of them also have a silence effect. Also, this cave is loaded with iron and gold nodes, which respawn pretty fast. Make sure you at least get to 175 in mining before you leave this place. If you at any point over aggro too many mobs, you can always jump down this little crack here, and the mobs, they should bug out and reset. These harpies also drop light feather, which can sell for a lot on the auction house, and Vibrant Plume, which is used for the Dark Moon Fairy rep grind. They can sometimes sell on the auction house, but if they don't, they can be vendored for a decent amount. Also be careful if there are other players in the cave. There is a quest here which spawns waves of harpies. If you've made it this far into the video, please go ahead and like the video, and make a comment. I've heard it helps the algorithm. From levels 33 to 36, make your way to Gadgetan in Ternaris. Remember to pick up the flight path and set your hearthstone. Then go back to the Shimmering Flats. I suggest you pick up and complete all the quests here that are local to this area. After that, start grinding on the scorpions and insects here and here. Make sure you also mine all the mithril ore that spawns here. The scorpions drop large venom sack and the insects along with the basilisks drop valuable grey items. As you increase in level, switch to the basilisk here once you can kill them at a reasonable pace. But keep checking back at the cave every half an hour or so, so make sure you mine all the mithril there. From levels 36 to 38, we make our way to the Swamp of Sorrows. Make sure you get the flight path and set your hearts down. Then make your way to this area here and start grinding on the green whelplings. If this spot is already taken or the value of flame sacks are low, Go to this area instead and grind on the swamp creatures here. These mobs have a 2% chance of dropping a herbalism enchant, which I have sold several of for between 25 and 50 gold each. Also make sure you track herbalism while in this area as there are valuable herbs like goldthorn and blindweed here. For levels 38 till 42 we are going back to Arafi Highlands. Here we will be grinding elementals fire, earth and water. 
whichever has the most valuable drops or are the most convenient to grind. If the area you're grinding is either taken or you're sitting around and waiting for spawns, then go to one of the other elemental areas. At the time of making this video, the elemental fires, which you guessed it, drop from fire elementals sells for around 5 gold. But when AQ comes around, the value of elemental fire will drop significantly and elemental earth will increase significantly in value. The same can probably be said for elemental water when Nax comes around. The point is you grind whichever is the most relevant for you when you watch this video. Now this wraps up part 2 of my 3 part leveling guide. If you liked the video please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel so you can stay tuned for part 3 where we go over levels 40 to 60. So go all battle level. I have walked in the shot fast. Okay, I have walked in the shot again. I have walked in the shot now. Yeah! Yeah! Then I have gone for Fatty man, fatty, fatty, then that's a